opening scene, we look at the life of Frank the Irishman, telling us the story of his life and how he became who he is today. Frank used to deliver meat for some company, but because he wasn't making a lot of money, he starts a little side hustle. He starts to work for this guy called Skinny Razor. The meat company would give him the meat to deliver, but he ends up selling it to Razor instead of delivering it to its original place. And one day, Frank the Irishman sold all the meat and he got into a little bit of a problem. His company tried to fire him, and because he was a union man, he decided to fight them in court. And his lawyer was William Buffalino. And his lawyer gets him off somehow, and Frank is very thankful for that. And this guy, Buffalino, introduces him to his cousin, Russell. And Frank already met Russell once on an accident, so Russell knows who he is. And he took a bit of a shine to him. And I'm guessing from the name Buffalino, you guys already figured out that these people are all Italian. And the only person who isn't Italian is Frank the Irishman. It's in his name, the Irishman. But he does know how to speak Italian because of the war. He was stationed in Italy in World War II, and he seems like a trustworthy guy. Russell likes him, but he doesn't trust him right away. And this guy that he works for, Razor, makes Frank do a few errands for him. At this point, Frank's already realized who Russell is. He's like this big time mafia boss, and he runs everything in that city. And the guy that Frank is currently working for, Mr. Razor, works for Russell. Everybody works for Russell. And things start going well with Frank. He starts making good money, but he also gets a lot of more kids. So he starts working some more. And at this point, he was painting houses. He's basically going around killing people that need to be killed. He's like a mafia now. And since the mafia worked with Jimmy Hoffa, and they had their hands in all the union reps, and since Russell really liked Frank and he could trust him with almost anything, Russell introduces him to Jimmy. Jimmy was having a few problems. Being a president of the union is not really that easy, and Russell introduced the both of them so that Frank could protect him. You see, Jimmy was getting a lot of death threats and Frank is a really good house painter. So they finished their first conversation by Jimmy inviting Frank to come to Chicago. And in Chicago, Frank finds himself in some kind of union war. There was Jimmy's team and there was another guy called Paul and Frank starts working for Jimmy and they start to sabotage the other guy, throwing all his taxis in the ocean, blowing them up. That kind of stuff. And after doing a lot of work for Jimmy, Frank and Jimmy got pretty close. And so did their wives and their family. Everything was pretty cool. And since most of the people that were giving Jimmy protection and some money were Italians and they were friends with the Kennedys, they made sure Kennedy got elected. But after Kennedy got elected, he made his brother attorney general and his brother Robert turned Jimmy's life upside down. Don't get me wrong. Most of the Italians, including Russell, were pretty happy about the Kennedys. But his brother Robert kept biting the hand that fed him. Jimmy wasn't necessarily friends with the Kennedys, he just had a client that was. And this client was a mobster, so that's why the Kennedys were elected. They punched up the votes a little bit. Matter of fact, Jimmy kinda hated the Kennedys, like, a lot. And the Mafia wanted Kennedy in office because he was gonna get rid of Castro in Cuba. And the Mafia had a lot of stake in Cuba. Casinos, a bunch of businesses, that kind of thing. And they figured if Kennedy can get rid of Castro, they can go back to Havana and make a lot of money. But that didn't happen. Jimmy tried to do the best that he could to keep his union together, and that was going well for a while. But there was also this other guy called Tony Pro. And he was from New Jersey, and he was making a lot of threats, carrying a lot of companies, and Jimmy didn't really like that. But they couldn't really do anything because this guy Pro was already in the Mafia and he was already killing a lot of guys. And Jimmy had other problems on his table as well. Kennedy was trying to put him in jail and Hoffa was paying a lot of people just to stay out of jail. And the trial went on for a couple days and there was a big media coverage. But apparently the prosecutors had somebody on the inside and Jimmy went to jail. And in a couple months, the police arrested Tony Pro as well. And Tony and Jimmy didn't really like each other. And when they fought in prison, everybody knew that something bad was gonna happen. And as soon as that happened, there was another guy who just didn't listen to anybody. They called him Crazy Joe and he killed a lot of people. And he made it public. He even made fun of Russell, even though Russell is like a really big boss, because this guy just didn't care. Growing up, he kidnapped his own bosses. I mean, you die from that, but this guy just did it. And it was about time he got what's coming to him. And Russell and Frank made sure of that. And as soon as this guy died, things were a little bit calm again. And Jimmy got released after four years, and he wanted to be president of the union again. But in order to do that, he needed a lot of votes. And the person who had a lot of votes was Tony Pro. And Jimmy hated him so much that it was so hard for him to ask for help. Matter of fact, they set up a meeting, and Tony was late for five minutes, and the meeting ended with Jimmy getting a black eye. And the fight between Tony and Jimmy was really intensifying, and that was bad for everybody. 
Frank tried to do everything he could to calm things down, but Jimmy didn't listen. He didn't care about anybody. He didn't even care about Russell. All Jimmy wanted was to be president again, and his second in command, Fitz, was actually now working with Tony Pro, and that upset Jimmy a lot. And so Jimmy started making a lot of noise, he kept blowing up people's cars, and Russell and the rest of the mafia didn't really like that. There was a lot of back and forth, where Frank would try to convince Jimmy to calm down, and there's probably some kind of way where he could be president again, but Jimmy just didn't listen. And at a party, honoring Frank for his services, because he was also a small union leader, and at Frank's party, Russell tries to talk to Jimmy, but again, Jimmy doesn't listen. And then Russell and the rest of the Mafia bosses tell Frank to talk to him. They tell him that Jimmy has to retire now, otherwise, they're gonna whack him. And again, Jimmy just doesn't care. He tells Frank that he's got tapes, he's got paper trails. If they try to do something to him, they're gonna go down with him as well. And like this, Jimmy puts both Russell and Frank in a spot they don't really wanna be in. They both like him, but now he's becoming a big problem, so Russell tells Frank that he has to finish the job. And Frank flies to Detroit, he tricks Jimmy, and he gives him two shots in the back and he kills him. And not only that, after they kill him, they cremate his body so that nobody figures out what happened to Jimmy Hoffa. But as soon as that happens, the police starts coming for everybody. I'm talking Russell, I'm talking Anthony Fat Tony. Just think of every stereotypical Italian mafia name. All of them go to jail. And most of them die in jail too. And Frank also goes to jail. And by the time Frank made it out, he already had lung cancer, his body was falling apart. His family hated him because he was a mobster, and his favorite daughter, Peggy, didn't even speak to him. And after about a decade and a half, the police go to Frank and they ask him what happened to Jimmy. They tell him that all his friends are dead, his life is over, the mafia life is completely gone, but Frank doesn't tell anybody anything. And on the very last days of his life, Frank spends it in a home, he doesn't really have anybody that comes and visits, and the only people he sees regularly are his nurse and his priest. And the movie ends with his priest flying to another state for a family visit, and Frank spending Christmas all alone in a home. And that is pretty much the story of Frank the Irishman and the Mafia. The movie's point was about legacy, and you're supposed to think about how when you become a mobster and you kill all the people that you need to kill and you make the money, everything just stops making sense because the things that really matter in life are not really money and power. And the people that do everything they could to get it end up alone at the end, just like Frank did. Do you think Frank's life is worth living? Do you think that he should have stayed a meat delivery guy instead of becoming a mobster? Leave your comments in the comments section. There are so many details in this movie that I did not talk about because it was just such a long movie, but worth it. And I urge you guys to check it out. Also, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I promise to see you guys on the next recap. Bye.